Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out RV Daydream and we're going to continue to check out some of these less expensive generators and in this case this is designed by Japan made by China so I've already done a review with the big one let's look at the little one the little brother what have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream So if you guys didn't see the review that I did prior to this one, I did the AY3000i and I was very impressed with that generator. It had a lot of features that I didn't expect for a generator that was coming under the price of the Yamaha and the Honda. Now there are a lot of inexpensive 2000 watt generators out there such as the Paxis generator, the Paxis 2000 that I just did a review on. but also some of the harbor freight 2000 watt generators but the difference between a tema that stands out and i mean by a lot compared to those is that it's going to be a little bit more expensive it's going to be maybe about 200 dollars more not quite 200 dollars more about 150 dollars more but it's because they have a yamaha engine in them now if you were to buy the yamaha equivalent of this generator you would be at about $900 and this one comes in at just over $600 at $620 at time of filming. Now the difference in this generator uh, compared to the other ones that I've been sent in the past is I purchased this generator outright. I was so impressed with the large generator, the AY3000i, that I decided I wanted to see what the little one was like. So I purchased this one outright. And I expect great things, just like from that big one. Again, the Yamaha engine, essentially, other than the inverter itself, you are getting a Yamaha generator. It's, it's different in design, yes. It is coming from China, yes. But the quality control on the engine is top-notch. And as far as the inverter technology, looking at that AY3000, I found that to be pretty impressive. So as far as this one's concerned, we're going to get this out. We're going to see how it compares to some of the uh, smaller generators that are out there right now. And, uh, you know, talk about how this could be your option if you want a good name like Yamaha being your power plant, but you don't want to pay for that Yamaha price. Again, the difference between $600 and $900 on something that uh, you're going to utilize when you're out RVing. Uh, there's a big difference there. That's that's a big difference. I could buy other 2000 watt generators for the price difference between this one and the Yamaha brand. So let's open it up and see what they give you. All right, this one was shipped to me by UPS and it came just like you see it here. Um, I'm not a big fan of things that come not over boxed, but the box is made very well. I don't suspect any damage has happened in here and other generator companies they ship their stuff the same way without an overbox but it might be something that some of these companies might want to start into uh, just because it can be a little rough in transport especially coming all the way from let's say China <laughs> but this one here came from a, a local warehouse uh, that's in the US and I got it right away they provide customer service that's local here uh, it's an 800 number uh, an 844 number uh, you'll get hold of somebody. They speak English. Everything's fine. It's not like it used to be with this stuff. So don't be too concerned about that. Of course, here's California emissions information. And then just like the Atima, the big Atima, they're going to ship you the oil that you need. And I don't know if you can tell here, but that's the exact amount of oil that's needed to fill this generator. So that is always a nice plus to have something like that. Further into the box, you're going to get your little tool kit, which is impressive. I'm glad that they have it. Uh, spark plug removal wrench. And then you've got your manual here. So let's go ahead and open this up and see the contents. Now in your tool kit, you're not actually getting tools. <laughs> well, sort of. You're going to get a wrench uh, that will open up the generator. And it's nothing special. It's just this is the socket that they give you. Uh, 10 millimeter you can find these anywhere it's nice they include that though and then you also have a uh, Phillips bit that can go into that same wrench fitting and then you have this power port to battery cable connectors uh, that's going to help if you want to charge a battery directly okay and just like the big brother the AY3000 
not only are you going to get the owner's manual or operation manual for the generator gives you all kinds of good information in there you're also going to get the Yamaha engine owner's manual this is the MZ80 now, I want to open this up to make sure that you got a chance to see that directly from Yamaha they're going to give you a three-year limited warranty they're going to show everything that the warranty is included and they're also going to show you how to contact them uh, if there's any chance that you might need warranty work you know these Yamaha things they go a long time they go for a long long time I wouldn't expect any problems for maybe the first eight years unless you're really really heavy use make sure that you follow the oil change interval speaking of the oil change interval it's just like most of these generators you're going to run this thing on and off for the first month and either if you reach 20 hours or at the end of that first month of running it on and off you're going to change the oil once you change the oil after that you can go a hundred hours or six months and then you're due for another oil change again that's running it on and off so if you just have this thing sitting in the corner don't think after six months you have to change your oil if you haven't run it at all that's if you're running it on and off so it's either 100 hours or six months whichever comes first during operation so it's always a good idea to know what your maintenance schedule is and write it down somewhere write it down if you want to on the unit itself get yourself a tag tie it to the unit and write down the date and the hours in which you put in your oil for the first time the 20 hour mark and then of course the 100 hour mark and the date all right so pulling off the packaging here we'll expose the generator and as far as the generator itself it weighs about 45 pounds let's go ahead and get it out and get some dimensions off of it first first impressions this thing is like a little finely tuned piece of robot or something it just looks really nice i love the way that the the black and the white go together as far as how smooth it is now uh, this one here is all plastic uh, the overall dimensions of this going at its widest point or longest point you're at 20.8 inches so 21 inches length as far as the width you're just over 12 inches here on its widest point and it does flare out at the bottom so basically at this black line here from this side to the other side you're at 12.2 inches so basically about 12 and a quarter inches and then as far as your height up to the handle all the way to the bottom you're at 19.3 so just over 19 and let's say 3 eighths of an inch so not a bad size and pretty comparable to all the rest that are out there so let's look a little bit closer at the features here it looks like that the tether broke on this that's a little disconcerting but it is a pretty inexpensive item here and it is really cold out so I, I can't think that's too much the generator's fault <laughs> as it is how cold it is inside here you're gonna find a basket whenever we fill this up we're gonna fill it up to this red line that's in here and there is a fuel gauge I don't know if you can tell there but there is a fuel gauge that you can read I like that I mean you don't have to open this up and do the old flashlight trick or some of the dumber people out there do the lighter trick <laughs> try to see if they can look down in the gas um, whenever you're putting this back on I've always said this if it's got a vent go ahead and click it allow it to click on this panel here real nice and easy to check your oil that has a tether it's a rubber tether and again this is your oil fill I love how simple they make it for you to check your oil that's an important thing I'll have to say this is a little bit harder for me I have some rather large fat hands and uh, getting to this dipstick is is a little on the tougher side for me now with this engine they're going to ship you just a plug there's not a dipstick in this case that's not a big deal just for the fact that you can take and check the oil just by seeing if you can see it in the threads it's kind of indicated in this picture here but if it's showing in these threads about halfway up on the threads or it's just touching the bottom of this plug you're good it is definitely you definitely have enough oil in there and you can tell by the first oil fill they give you the correct amount of oil in the bottle so whenever you fill this for the first time that oil level is going to be shown on the threads and you can take a mental note of where it should be if you want though and I highly suggest this Atima again if you go to their website you can get a dipstick a magnetic dipstick that will replace this does an exceptional job I highly recommend getting one of those we're gonna go ahead and 
snap that back in place. This is going to be your spark plug access port. You just pull this out whenever you want to pull your spark plug, clean it off, or replace it. Again, follow the maintenance interval on that. And now if we get to the business end of things, you're going to see the front end here. Typical setup. Two 110 outlets. This is going to be, they're calling it twin tech. Of course, that's for paralleling with another unit. You have your ground here. Here's your choke. Pretty straightforward. Here's your reset. Here's your reset for this as far as an overload. You have your smart throttle. It's either off or on. We're going to go ahead and turn it off. That's the way you should start it all the time. No load. Smart throttle off. Once it starts, then turn it on and plug something in. And then your indicators here. You have your output indicator. If that's on, that means you've got power. Everything's normal. Um, overload, this will flash. If you put something that's too much of a drain in here, that'll pop this light on and kick the electricity off. The engine will continue to run, but this will flash and let you know that no power is being outputted. And then, of course, a low oil alert. Don't ever trust these lights, and don't ever trust the low oil shutoff. Make sure you keep an eye on your oil level. Then you've got your power port, which I showed you that little connector that they give you that you plug into there and you can connect to a battery. Again, pretty much straightforward here. This is gonna be the air intake side to keep the converter cool. There is a fan inside that runs and draws cool air from this side and blows it across the engine and of course drawing it across this inverter. So make sure that you have it well ventilated and don't block off this side and of course the exhaust side too. And then on this side, pretty straightforward, you can see this is going to be your on and off. Of course, it says don't pull the cord when it's running. I'm not sure why you would do that, but <laughs> I guess some people do. Um, so yeah, you, we're gonna put this on to turn your gas on. This turns your fuel off. And then finally, we have the exhaust side. If you look here, there's a spark suppressor. Uh, that's required for a lot of the national forest, especially you guys that live out west. Um, it's kind of important that you have that just in case a little piece of hot carbon comes off of the exhaust, off the piston inside. It doesn't get blown out into a pile of leaves or branches or something dry and starts a forest fire, which, of course, we know how bad that is. And then this is also exhaust. This is the exhaust from the blower, and it's very hot. So whenever you're thinking, hey, I got to make sure I set this up not to burn anything, not only is hot air coming out of here, hot air is coming out of here too. So be real careful with that. So at this point, what we're going to do is go ahead and fill this up with oil. Of course, the recommended level. I don't mean overfill it, just fill it. <laughs> I'm going to top this off with gas. We're going to set this up, give it a pull, hear what it sounds like, get an overall basic idea of its noise. What they're saying on this one is that this once filled with one gallon will run 10.3 hours at a quarter load or 4.2 hours at full load. Now, I love the fact that they're including a time on full load. Uh, a lot of the companies, what they do is they offer half load or quarter load time. It, who knows exactly how that works out because you have run wattage, you have starting wattage. Uh, this thing is set up to where it will start at 2000 watts just to get whatever it is you've got connected started, like a circular saw or an air compressor, something like that. But once that has started, it will only let you run up to 1600 watts. So ideally, if you go half a load, it should be 800 watts is half a load, a half a running load. But we're going to find out today by putting a load on it uh, that is going to make a draw on this and uh, see when it runs out of gas. We'll put a timer on it. I've got the generator set out here and I'm going to be doing a run test. That's why this furnace is out here. Uh, this furnace draws 1500 watts whenever it's on high. This thing is fueled up, oiled up, and of course if you remember there's a basket inside here and if that basket, uh, you see the red line, and the fuel is up to that red line, that means that it's full. You don't need to go any higher than that. Uh, you can get a little bit in there, but just be careful. So what we're going to do is uh, fire this thing up. You always start it with eco mode off. So it means the high RPM. You want the high RPM initially and no load. You don't want to load on this. We're going to go ahead and turn on the fuel. We're going to give it a couple little pulls and we're going to see what this thing uh, sounds like at roughly 17 foot. And I've got an unscientific setup over there, like always. Let's go ahead and set you down here and see how many pulls this brand new generator takes to get started. There's one. 
really easy to pull, nothing hard to do. There's two. And just like you would expect a Yamaha engine to sound, it's quiet. It's It's got a nice purr to it. And of course the eco mode's off, so we're gonna let it warm up without the eco mode and uh, give it a couple of minutes to stabilize itself. Then we'll put a load on it. But in the meantime, let's come over here and check this non-scientific gauge. And I've got a lot of wind and traffic noise, and we actually have a generator that's running on the other side of the truck right now. Uh, but not very much can be picked up from that from here because it's also an inverter. This is one of the quietest generators that I've ever tested, I'll tell you that right now. Um, I did have that Honda 2000, uh, but this is very, very quiet, very comparable. Of course, we got some pigs over there making some noise too. <laughs> fighting over some food. <laughs> Sounds like they're, they're barking. Maybe they don't like the generator. <laughs> what we'll do is we'll uh, go ahead and turn it off of eco mode and we'll come back and see what it sounds like. Again, this thing just purrs. And we're at 17 foot. The, the camera's at 17 foot. And here we go. I'm going to say that that's probably 53 decibel because there is a little bit of a wind blowing and my microphones are picking it up. So uh, we'll say 54 at the most, but 53 most likely. So now we'll go ahead and plug in this little furnace. Uh, and fire it up. So I'm not going to set this on high because uh, this thing does draw about 12, 13 amps uh, and 1500 watts. So we'll put it on the medium setting and uh, we'll see how long this thing runs. So we'll go ahead and plug this in. Here we go. And put it on the highest temperature setting, but we're only going to this setting here. We will try it on the highest setting to see what kind of RPM change we get, but first this one. Wow, there's hardly anything. There's hardly any change at all. Maybe I will go to high. That's incredible. There is no real concernable sound difference. Here we go, now it's ramping up. Wow. I, I was so surprised. I mean, right now we're pulling 1500 watts at over 12 amps and That's all the sound we're getting out of it. That is very good. I'm very impressed with the sound quality. It's got a different tone to it than our other generator that we're testing over there. So this one easily competes with the Yamaha 2000 and the Honda 2000. Uh, and the fact that it has a Yamaha engine, it really competes with the Yamaha model at $900 is what the Yamaha model comes in at. Again, this one being just over 600 at 619 dollars at time of filming the links are going to be down below for all of these generators click the link it'll make sure that you get it to the exact same one that i'm talking about and it'll help out this channel for me to do more reviews just like this one so now that this is running uh, we need to go ahead and look at our timer here so it's 12 13 p.m and this has been running about a minute so we'll just say 12 12. Uh, as this does not have an hour meter, it's something that I would highly suggest that you get. Uh, the hour meters are very easy to install, and that way there's no question on how many hours you've had this thing running. 
All right, so we've been going on this one just over an hour, and I don't expect us to be able to see much on the fuel gauge, but we'll check to make sure everything's okay out here. I did turn this down to the uh, lower setting, which is about 1,200 watts. Uh, I want to get a better feel for what it would be like. Again, you can't really see, but it has moved off the full mark slightly but it's still going strong. We'll come back a little bit later. To make it easier on myself, I moved the, the other generator that I'm reviewing out here uh, so I can just come to one location and check them both out. But as far as the Atima goes, we're coming up on two and a half hours that this has been running now. And we'll check the fuel gauge. And you can see that we're at half a tank uh, that's interesting it seems like that, that one might be using uh, a decent amount of gas and I don't know if it's because the furnace is drawing more compared to the other one but it could just be the gas gauge is inaccurate uh, again I'm not comparing these two to each other I'm doing it separate we'll come back with this uh, Atima whenever we have uh, a more definite amount of time that's gone by to where it's running out of gas finally. Looks like the sun's gonna go down before that happens though. So the Atima has been running for three hours now. So we're gonna check the fuel level on that. Again, we've been running mainly on 1200 watts this entire time. And the gas gauge is just below a half. All right, so the Atima has been running for four hours and of course the load is still 1200 watt and we're going to look at the gas gauge so it's definitely been using the gas i'll have to say right now i'm showing that it's consuming a little bit more gas than the uh, paxis is but as far as the output i know that this polonis is pretty much a hog as far as power where that other heater doesn't quite use up as much but we're both at 1200 watts uh, supposedly I don't know if the other one's shutting off intermittently or not but again still just comparing the Atima I went ahead and switched the source on the two different generators as far as the draw because I noticed that that Polonis pulls a lot more power than the uh, dark colored one that's on the right there on the Atima, I went ahead and switched and put a lower draw on it uh, to give it a fair comparison as far as its runtime. Uh, it is supposed to be 1200 watt. We'll go ahead and see if that's the case and uh, let it run out here. All right guys, so finally, uh, this one here, just to let you know, has a one gallon tank versus the uh, Paxis has a 1.1 gallon tank. Uh, but even with this one having a smaller tank, this one lasted almost exactly the same. It was just under eight hours, and that is really good because it was almost at a full load. And they're saying that at a full load, this thing should only run about four and a half hours, so uh, really good, very, very good. Of course, being the Yamaha engine, you should expect that. So now that we looked at the little brother to the big Atima generator that I did a review on prior, I'm coming from this whole experience impressed. It's a good generator. The fact that it has a Yamaha engine on it, that I mean, that's a peace of mind that you just can't buy unless you buy something like a Honda or a Yamaha. The fact that this has that in there and it's, you know, $300 less than what Yamaha is asking for, for that same engine, basically, that's pretty good. Now, the warranty on this is a two-year warranty. And as far as the parts and labor, first year, covered everything the second year you're only going to get parts only however you're still going to be able to get parts and a lot of this stuff that ends up failing on these little generators not a big deal and you could probably do the work yourself so it's nice to be able to have parts access so as far as a lot of these generators that are coming out into the market in the US and you're comparing them to the Hondas and the Yamahas you know we're getting to the point where they're all kind of like our cars. They all seem to look the same, do the same, and be the same. This one here I found pretty impressive because it was only supposed to run about eight hours on like a quarter load or a half a load. 
and I put a good load to it and it lasted eight hours. For the majority of the test, I was at 1500 watts. Then I went ahead and dropped it down to a, a good solid 1200 watts. And then I put another uh, heater on there that was about 1200 watts, maybe a little bit less. And it lasted over eight hours. I mean, that's really good. I mean, I'm gonna just say eight hours because it was barely over eight hours. But as far as being quiet, one of the quietest, like I said, it's one of the quietest generators that I tested by far. Really impressed with that. So if you're looking for a really good name in the engine with Yamaha, and you're looking for good backup as far as support, and really two good manuals. I mean, you have a manual for the Yamaha engine, you have the manual for the generator itself. Uh, this is a good choice. Now, again, it's a little bit more expensive than some of the other generators that I checked out and reviewed, such as like the Paxis. That one only comes in around $450. And this one, you're talking just over $600. But again, it's because you're getting that Yamaha engine. And if you want that Yamaha engine any other way, you're going to have to go to a Yamaha, and now you're paying $900 for the same output. So I think that this is a good choice. Now the links are going to be down below for this. I'm also going to include the links for my Paxis generator. Also the other Atima generator, the big Atima that I did a review on. And I'm also going to include a link for the uh, cover, the cover for this. They have a real nice custom cover that goes over top of this to keep it clean. You know how important that is when you're transporting it. And also that magnetic dipstick. That's a, a really key piece there that you can use that dipstick to catch any metal shavings. Now, most of the time during break-in, the engine is a lot of aluminum, but where there's metal to metal having contact, like the rings and stuff like that, whenever that stuff starts to wear, whatever hard metals you get in there, you definitely want to attract them as best as possible to the oil and to that dipstick. So again, the links are down below. I appreciate it. And as always, guys, I hope to see you out there. Bye.